The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. Hey guys, how is it going? And welcome to the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It is Thursday, September 12th, and so happy for you joining us. We are ready to start another day together with the Lord. So subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. So today we have an exciting podcast for you. We have sermons in the sky, Q&A Thursday word study, and of course commentaries, updates, and news on what is happening around the world in this history today. All right, everyone, how are you doing? And yes, we are getting into the second half of this week. It is already Thursday. Hope you guys enjoyed the Wednesday service last night. Uh, don't forget, we also have Q&A Thursday, not just today, but every single week. So get those questions ready. Send them to me whenever you can. And if you haven't yet, Leave a like and comment to build our community. I am just super happy for everyone joining us every weekday on the Morning Star Drive. So let's get up and support each other each and every day. Uh, this week's Sunday message title is Creation of Body and Spirit. And it is to make yourself in body and spirit. All right. So uh, awesome, awesome. It's uh, We're getting to the end of the week, the end of, uh, you know, six weeks for me uh, being in this mission. So I am very grateful and thankful for that too. A uh, lot of different thoughts um, that I've been having. And uh, like, I'll just say, I'm, it's a month and a half for me. A month and a half, uh, you know, I'm working as hard as I can to organize, work on the mission the best I can. And, uh, you know, I'm, it's, it's great that I'm getting acquainted with the leaders uh, from other countries. And, uh, you know, I'm still not fully uh, comfortable in my mission yet. Uh, I don't have that full grasp of it. Of course, I'm getting more and more comfortable each and every day. Uh, slowly getting to understand what I'm supposed to be doing. What I, and uh, I would say what's more interesting is uh, understanding time. Like, what does that mean? Is... You know, there are already things that I look at like, oh, this would be co- kind of cool to do. Oh, this would be kind of cool to do. And I also know that change is not something that just happens quickly, uh, depending on how big or how small it is. But usually there's a gradual history. It's something gradual, right? But what's, what's interesting in Korea too is uh, Korea has that, that pali pali mentality. Like quick, 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 quick. Come on, let's get it done quick. Come on, you got to do it right now kind of thing, right? And because I'm here you kind of are like stuck in this world where everything is done so quickly and yet things uh, like real big change won't happen that quickly either, right? So I am thinking about timing and also trying to figure out uh, what is the best way to do things uh, in a wise way. And uh, you know when I think about, um, when we think about doing it in a wise way, I thought to myself is what is a wise way to do things? And I think it is like a slow and steady. But I was thinking, you know, have you guys ever thought this too? Like sometimes the wisest way is a strong way. And I thought, yeah, sometimes there's no choice but to be super strong to make change. But it's like, I think that's more rare, right? And I think the wisest way is usually the slow and gradual and slow and steady. And like, and like I said before, the reason why it's so difficult in my mind being in Korea for this, because it's very, very easy to confuse the like the quickly, quickly mentality, the pali pali mentality, and um, the gradual history of God. Like these two concepts, one is uh, kind of one is more is like you know God wants us to be swift clouds, and yet even though God wants us to be swift clouds, it's a gradual history, and. When you realize like, oh, what does it mean it's a gradual history? What does it mean that it's, uh, uh, it's one of those, you know, what does it mean it's a, it's a fast, like you need the fast mentality, but it's a gradual history. And it basically means that you need to do all the little things really, really quickly. Like get those things done, right? Get those things down so that, because history is so big, in order for it to move or to change, um, there's like a thousand moving parts. But if the thousand moving parts are not moving quickly, that big machine doesn't move, uh, doesn't move at all, right? So if you look at, like, say, even a watch, and you look at the little, like, the, the what do you call those things that 
turn inside. Well, I forget what those, those are called, right? And they're turning much more quickly than the actual watch itself is moving. But it moves way more quickly, right? Those things are moving fast, but the overall big picture of the clock is moving very, very slow, right? You look at all the things inside of a car, the things inside of the engine are moving crazy fast. All the little things are moving and turning and, and pumping really, really fast, but the car itself will never move as fast as the smaller parts within, right? And uh, I was talking to one of, uh, one of the people that I work with, and they're, you know, they're, they've been doing this for so long. They're so wise. They're really, really wise, where they, you know, they're telling me today, like, hey, you know, we, you know, I know that you want to get things done quickly, this and that, but, you know, think about you're, you're going to be here for like five years. And I was like, huh, huh. And, you know, and the, re the reason why that really, really hit me is because I do talk about that. I do talk about, like, say, if you're going to be a leader, if you only have, like, Three years, you're going to be counting it down. You're going to try to figure out what you can do in those three years, what kind of visible things you can show in those three years, right? But if you have more time, it's completely different. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, oh, that's so true. If I'm thinking about five years, that's a really, really long time. It's like 60 months, and I've gotten through one and a half, right? And I thought to myself, I was like, yeah, you know, if... What, what the best thing is, is for IMD, IMD, for us to be working at peak performance when it gets there. And it's not going to happen right away. It's not going to happen right at the beginning, right? It's going to take some time for the, you know, the cogs. They're, that's what they're called, the cogs, right? The cogs to start turning and moving. It's going to take time. Just like me, I'm just like, it's slowly moving for me now, looking at it step by step, wondering, oh, what am I supposed to do here? Ah, oh, what am I supposed to do? Ah, oh, what am I supposed to do here too? Right? So, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I just sat there and I really thought to myself, this is something that, uh, that I'm very, very grateful and thankful about and something that uh, I'm grateful that there are people that are really wise around me that give me that type of, like that wisdom that is needed at the right time, right? Because, you know, what happens if, if you want to get things done really, really quickly and you get really impatient, then, you know, what eventually happens is, you know, you get frustrated, you get upset in your mind, and then you start to forget reason and logic, right? And then sometimes you're like, oh, no, it's not moving fast enough. Oh, what does Sunsi want here? What does Sunsi want here? You start to feel the urgency. Then you begin to make a lot of mistakes because you're doing things out of emotion more than doing things in a reasonable and uh, proper way. And if I'm, you know, just like that person told me, if I'm thinking really long term, when you think long term and things are going to take some time, you don't really panic or get frustrated. It's more about, hey, trust the process, right? Trust in that process that it takes so that you can do it the right way, right? And yes, I know, Sunsi's going to say, I want this done. You know, we want this to happen. This is what we're supposed to do. And, you know, Sunsi wants to report on all the things going on. And uh, uh, it, it, it's very, very interesting because uh, I, was, I was reading, I was looking into something that was very uh, interesting about... Um, I saw this report on, you know, Ubers, you know, there's like Ubers, taxis, grab cars, right? And the psychologist was talking about why they started to show the maps of where the cars were. You know, the you know when the taxis are on the way, it shows you what road they're on and how many minutes it takes for them to get to your house, right? And so imagine you're on your Uber or Grab app and it says, oh, taxi's seven minutes away and it's showing where the taxi is. And how long it's going to take and what route it's taking. And it is interesting. He, the, the, this, this psychologist was saying, do you know why they started doing that? And I'm like, that's an interesting way. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. You get to see where the car is. And, and this, is what, this is what the psychologist said. It's so interesting. He said, uh, the map, showing the map of the car, it doesn't change how fast, the, uh, how fast the taxi comes. It will always come at the exact same time whether you see that map or not. Right? Regardless if it shows you the map of where the car is or not, it'll come at the same time as before. 
So it's like, so what's the point of showing the map if it's not even going to change how fast the car comes? Because people were thinking, to, like a lot of these researchers were thinking, how can we make the taxis come faster, right? So it's like, yeah, how do you make them come faster? So when they put the maps up, it completely changed the way the customers viewed it, even though the taxis never came faster or slower because of that map. So what's the reason why they started putting up these maps? Because the one thing that makes customers frustrated or struggle with taxis and Ubers and grabs is uncertainty. They have no idea when the taxi will come. And this is what makes customers so fragile. They get angry. They get upset. Where's my taxi? Where's my Uber? What's going on? How come it's taking this long? But when they see the car on the map and where the car is, even though it doesn't come any faster, it takes away uncertainty. It shows the customer exactly where and how long the car takes, and it's more for the psychology of the customer, and that's it. Because of that, it calms down customers and it allows them to be in a better place in their mindset where they're not getting angry and mad. Why? Because of uncertainty, right? More than anything else, the thing that, that crushes our hearts and our minds is the uncertainty. What's going to happen? When is it going to happen? That's the thing that plagues our hearts and our minds. And, it is, and I was thinking about this, like, this is so interesting because when it comes to God's time, God's timing, when God makes things happen, the crazy part is we don't know when. And that's what drives us nuts. But it's also the reason why it's so exciting when something actually happens. It's the uncertainty that kills us, not the actual amount of time it takes. See, the hardest part of running with God is not about, oh, this is taking too long. It's the uncertainty. It's like that taxi, that Uber, that grab. You know what's coming. You know what's going to arrive but you have no idea when. And it's interesting. In God's history, he doesn't show it to us. And what's the big reason? Well, the bigger reason, when I thought about it, well, in God's history, is the uncertainty the biggest reason? I was like, well, I think what exacerbates the uncertainty and makes it more is we actually suffer. Like, it's not just us going out and trying to find it. We actually suffer, right? Uh, and... Uh, we know God is going to do something. We know we're going to receive a blessing if we keep doing these things. However, one of the bad parts about human beings is, is when we know when it's going to happen, we get lazy and we don't do what we're supposed to do and we actually end up losing that blessing, right? And that's something that, that I thought was quite interesting, right? Right? And it, I was just like, oh, that's so true. One of the hardest parts is, is when we're doing it, we're actually, uh, we're actually, what's the word? We're actually suffering during it. And that's why suffering makes us, you know, get even more emotional and it makes the uncertainty even more unbearable too. So I thought that was a kind of a cool thing that um, uh, that psychologist was talking about. And I think it's something that we, we should also think about ourselves is a lot of times it's not what we actually think. It's like people were all thinking what can make the taxis come faster. But the reality was it's all in the customer's mind. They just wanted to get rid of the uncertainty that they knew exactly when that, that taxi was coming. And that was enough. You didn't have to make supercars. You didn't have to make flying cars. All you needed was to make it like that, right? So I hope it's something that all of us will understand really well. I hope it's something that all of us um, will know our hearts well too because it's good to know that a lot of the times, um, most of the suffering that we go through is in our own heads. It really is. And I hope it's something that we can really get ourselves to understand at a much higher and better level too, right? You know, uh, for me, it's already Thursday and... Uh, uh, Thanksgiving is around the corner. Thanksgiving is around the corner. And when Friday hits, uh, you know, a ton of people will be heading back to their, you know, to their hometown. And, uh, um, this is one of the things I just absolutely want to avoid. This is why if I'm traveling to, to visit my friends, um, I want to travel today. 
before the traffic gets crazy or maybe Friday during work hours where, you know, people, uh, you know, it's a lot easier. Uh, it's a lot easier for me to, uh, you know, be driving in a certain area and stuff like that too. So, you know, Thanksgiving, Chuseok in Korea, uh, the Harvest Festival, I guess it's in, in Asian countries. Uh, it's it's going to be crazy. And in Korea, uh, whenever the, like whatever day Harvest Festival drops on, because it's, it's on the lunar calendar, it's the day before and the day after that are holidays, right? So this, this year was a jackpot, meaning the Harvest Festival day, Chuseok, is on a Tuesday, which means Monday and Wednesdays are holidays, which also means your holiday basically starts from Friday. So it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It's like six days. Right, so it, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's gonna get quite crazy. Traffic's gonna get quite crazy too. But for me, I'm gonna head down, just gonna relax, play some volleyball, help with some coaching. Uh, but I know that it's gonna get crazy in traffic, so I'm gonna make sure that I am not driving much later at night. Right, and that's 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 what I'm really hoping there too. Yeah, you know, in 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 America. Uh, Thanksgiving is is like one of the busiest days of the year. Like that whole Thanksgiving weekend is crazy. Everyone goes home, kind of like it, how it is in Korea. Everyone takes flights back home so that everyone, the families all gather together and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, imagine if you had like a six-day holiday. That would be crazy in America, wouldn't it? That's why everyone here in Korea is excited about it. Entire week, go off on holiday. And, uh, but you know, it's not like you're the only one going on holiday. Everyone goes on holiday. And because everyone's going on holiday, every uh, sightseeing place is going to be packed. And this is why I prefer to stay at home and chill like an old man does. Right? Just like an every old man, I'm going to chill. I'm going to be at home. And that's what I prefer to do. Right? Oh, I, was, I forgot to tell you the awesome news. Okay? So I have awesome news for you guys. Guys, um... Starting in October, because October is the month of giving glory to God. And it's also the, the month where the Rock Festival is happening, right? So those of you guys who are planning to come to Korea, Rock Festival is a great time. I believe it's starting in the middle. For like two weeks, it'll be in the middle of August sometimes. So if you come in the middle of August, you're definitely not going to miss it. Like I'd say after the 12th, right? You'll definitely, uh, like 12th and on, you'll be, uh, hint, hint, 12th and on, you'll be like hitting the Rock Festival. There's going to be some like Myeongsong uh, contest, stuff like that too. But uh, yeah, so if you guys want to come to the Rock Festival, it's going to be awesome, right? So I hope you guys will enjoy that. Uh, come, come during that time. It'll be a very, very good time to come, right? So uh, here's the awesome news. Because October is the month of giving glory to God. Uh, I have discussed with uh, this very, very famous uh, praise conductor, um, He's someone I'm very, very close with. Uh, I, 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 when I was in England, uh, pioneering a church over there, uh, he was one of the guys we pioneered the church together with. He actually became a head leader at that time also. But he is now like the national conductor of Taiwan. And, you know, I, I've been asking him for a while, like, hey, man, well, you know, see if you can do this. And he's like, he finally agreed. He's like, you know what? I really want to do this. And uh, he's put together... Uh, all the education from that he gives to church to church, like the, the education he gives, um, the education that is done for uh, that, all the education that's given by Sunsu, and he's made it into like a like an eight part series, and I think it's gonna be like it's gonna be amazing coming out during a GGG. So this is uh, Pastor Rungjo from Taiwan, and. Uh, He's like studied, uh, what do you call it? Uh, conducting. He does music, musicology, conducting. And what's that thing when you put scores and music together? What's that called again? Jeez, I, I, should, I should know this, right? Very, very good friend of mine. Um, and uh, I, I, I have, this guy is amazing. Uh, the way he prays, the way he's diligent. He's very consistent. And you can tell that he's, look at the position he's at right now. He's doing a huge mission in Taiwan. And he has graciously decided to give a series on praise education. So it's going to be awesome. I hope that you guys are all looking forward to this. It's going to be every Wednesday, right? 
Wednesday, uh, during uh, it's going to be there instead of Health is Happiness to take over that time, especially during the time of GGG. And most likely, uh, since it's going to be all, it's going to be October and November. I'm not sure how much more he's going to be able to put into it for the rest of the month, but I'm excited by this. So month of GGG, October, every Wednesday is going to be uh, Pastor Rungjo, or we call him RJ. And he's going to be doing praise, worship, choir, all this education on music that Sun Team's given. And it's going to be like an eight-part series. So I am super excited. Very fitting. Uh, every Wednesday, like I said, uh, last segment. And uh, yeah, I think everyone is really, really looking forward to this. And I know that you guys will really benefit from all the education from this series too. So please look forward to it. I hope that you guys can gain a ton of grace and love, understanding, praise, worship, choir, all these things, music from the view of the heavens. And that is something that uh, I, I really hope that, um, I don't know, I'm just excited. Like, I'm excited because he's contributing. I'm super excited too. And, and he's, his English is like, uh, he studied in England. So he actually has like an English accent. Taiwanese dude, English accent, and... Uh, yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's someone you guys got to meet in person too. He's really, really good. So uh, I am looking forward to this. And that is the exciting and awesome news that I wanted to tell everyone. We're going to be getting some praise, music education uh, that Sunsteam has given over the years. And it's going to be an eight-part series. Yay! I am so happy. Yes, all of us should be happy that we're getting this type of education too. Okay? So yeah, uh, lots of stuff going on and um, new, you know, did you guys hear Rachel on Tuesday, you know, on Eddie Kwan's 2G Talks, um, he got another second gen and I'm sure you know Rachel from uh, Pravi, the Pravi Puff Girls, Pravi West, right? And uh, she is one, one of the eldest second gens, one of them uh, in America and uh, she's, she just started her first uh, segment for 2G Talks. So a lot of people are excited about it. So remember, that's every Tuesday on Eddie's podcast, last segment. That's going to be Rachel, right? Rachel Donkles over there in, uh, in Houston, Texas. So very, very exciting and looking forward to more and more content uh, of hers too. So think about it, guys. New things happening all the time. We got Rachel coming in. We have RJ coming in too. And... Um, any of you guys out there really have that inspiration and you have something that you really want to share with people, it could be fashion, it could be beauty, it could be health, it could be all these, any topic, right? Remember, it doesn't have to be like, oh, it has to be really, really spiritual. Why? Because uh, there are already a ton of things that are spiritual on, content on this podcast from the word studies and stuff like that too. And, you know, there's could be a lot of things that are kind of like uh, spiritual, but in an indirect way where some seem is like, hey, beautify yourselves, how you dress, right? Or your skin or this or that. These are all things that are important, especially for people who are brides of this history and God wants, to be, wants us to be beautiful and look our best, right? And that is something that uh, I am very, very much looking forward to also. Uh, to, to listen to uh, Eddie and Rachel every Tuesday. Uh, Eddie's doing an amazing job also. I can't believe he's going to law school and doing one podcast a week. Uh, I'm glad that he got uh, Rachel to help him out also because it's good to have like new faces talking on here too. And like I said, any of you guys out there who are really, really inspired to do something, whether it's a standalone, uh, kind of like Love in Life, how Chelsea and Aaron are uh, doing the, the standalone on Saturdays, um, or it could be just a segment that you do every week. Any one of those is fine. Any one of those is fine. And uh, just please uh, send me a text, send me an email, whatever it is, and I would be glad to discuss with you and kind of go over what would what would work and what wouldn't. Like, we've had some amazing stuff in the past. We had like Wan Chun doing like MBTI. Uh, we, who else did we have out there? We had... Uh, Oh, we had Tulia from Australia doing the, uh, the prayer podcast. I thought that was awesome too, uh, just going out and praying. And uh, yeah, lots of stuff out there. So I hope that everyone really, really, uh, you know, open your hearts, open everything so that we'll really be able to uh, get more and more new content on this channel also, okay? So there it is, guys. That is segment number one for today's podcast, this Thursday podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, before we get into Q&A Thursday, let's get into the first music break of the day.
tonight. So let's get into today's uh, word study. And of course, every single Thursday is Q&A Thursday. And we're getting a bunch of good questions coming. Actually, they're, they're all coming in about a week before. Uh, so, I, you know, I actually look at the questions. I get excited by, excited by them because I'm like, man, I, I kind of want to answer them right away. Uh, but of course, I, I need to leave them for Q&A Thursday. And I, most of the time, I do ask people whether they're okay for me to answer it the week after. And most of them are telling, they're asking me to do it for Q&A Thursday. So, um, yeah, this, this one great question. Uh, this one, uh, this, this question, it's a long question. It's only one question today, but uh, it's going to be a pretty healthy answer, okay? And what this question says is, as I read the Bible, I see God's repeated pattern. He drops hints about his plan and also gives hope to those who trust him. Do you think that Revelations 13 verses 5 through 8 are describing our current situation? And uh, this, uh, Revelation 13, 5 to 8 says, The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them, and it was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. And then they wrote, linking this to Romans 15, 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And then they wrote, I feel both hopeful and relief somehow feeling hopeful because the blasphemy will stop eventually. And then in brackets, 42 months and feeling relief is to know that this tribulation happens to filter out some people whose names are not written in the book of the Lamb. Okay? So, a lot of good tidbits in here. We're gonna, we're gonna, we got to kind of answer these one by one. And is this kind of talking about our situation right now? And I would say definitely yes, right? And that's why, I, and I also agree that it is hopeful because it, this holds true to every tribulation difficulty. We know that 42 months symbolizes a time times and half a times, right? And time times and half a times has um, different symbolic meanings. For instance, um, time times and half times, whether it's three and a half, 42, or 1,260, these numbers symbolize a time of restitution, a time of Satan's reign, right? Uh, a time of mission, there's one more that I'm forgetting. A time of mission, a time of Satan's, Satan's reign, and a time of uh, restitution. I, th I think those are the three. I think those are the three, right? I think there might be one more. You guys can add it to the comments if I'm forgetting one of them. And it's not literal 42 months, right? Well, in, in some cases, it's more symbolic, right? So uh, one of the things that it is hopeful, and, I, and I'm glad that this listener brought up, is, is that it's going to come to an end. It's relief. Like, it means that tribulation does come to an end, and that is true. As long as we live in the body, and as long as we're in this physical realm, both good and bad will always come to an end. It is a guarantee in this physical realm, right? And that is a great hope for us right now who are going through this great tribulation, right? When you go to the spiritual world, everything lasts forever. And that's why when you go to heaven, it is good forever. You go to hell, it is bad forever kind of thing, right? So when we understand this really, really well, it's something that we have to look at and say, ah, okay, so this is what this is, this is trying to say to us, right? Everything is coming to an end. It is a great hope for us right now. This will all pass. And later, we're going to barely remember what even happened, Right? It's going to all feel like years and years ago, right? So think about this. 2023. It's only been nine months since 2023 ended. We barely talk about it. Like, we'll be like, oh, 2023. Wow, only nine months ago? Oh, that's so crazy, right? Yeah, it's only been nine months. It feels like it happened so long ago. We, we, we barely even talk about it. We, you know, the funny thing is, we talk about 2023 like it was so long ago. Remember yesterday I talked about, uh, what was it, 9-11. Uh, uh, 
Yesterday was the 23rd anniversary of 9-11. But you guys remember when it first happened? 23 years ago. The motto was, never forget. But you know what? 9-11, we've kind of forgotten. If you don't go down to the monument, if you don't watch TV or anything else, you're going to forget about 9-11. It's too long ago, right? So one of the things that we are guaranteed in this life, that no matter what, whether good or bad, in this physical realm, it all ends. And that is a great hope for all of us here right now going through the very, very difficult times. Now, the beast, the Antichrist, uh, all these parables about Satan, right? And Satan, as long as we live here on this earth, Satan will always be there too. But one thing we have to remember is this. When it says the beast has authority to, you know, blaspheme for 42 months, right? Remember, time times and half a times is the time of Satan also. Why? It's a time of restitution where there's like a ton of sin. And because of that sin, we have to pay for that sin. And during that time, it's Satan that rules. And we're going to go through a really, really difficult time, right? So Satan, but remember, with, from... Through the scriptures, it tells us that Satan always gets a chance to attack. Always. So if you look at Revelation chapter 20, verse 7 through 9, what does it say? And when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison. And what will happen? He will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. Their numbers like the sand of the sea, and they marched up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and beloved city, but fire came down from heaven and consumed them, right? So what happens? It shows that even here that there comes a point where Satan is actually released and he gets to attack the people. Now, why does that happen? So let's we'll take a look at it in both a miniaturized and magnified level. Miniaturized level, look at the time of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were first given the only word that God gave was, uh, do not eat the fruit that is in the middle of the garden, uh, the, the middle of the garden, uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? Don't eat that fruit, right? So that is the, the one thing that was told to Adam and Eve. So they are living off that one rule, which is don't eat that fruit, okay? So they get their time to really uh, understand and uh, understand that law. And once they understand that law, what happens next? They get the big test. So Satan comes in and tries to tempt Eve. Now, a lot of people will say, oh my gosh, why did God let Satan come in? God knew that Satan was there. Why didn't he like, just kill the snake, right? Well, what happens is, remember, we got free will. And on top of it, we have free will to do whether right or what is wrong. Now, it is not right for us to say, oh, he should have stopped them. Why? Because God already gave the answer. The answer was the word, don't eat the fruit, which means if they truly loved God, they would have listened to his word and not eaten the fruit. That's all they had to do, right? Temptation is all around us, but it doesn't mean we have to do it. So what I'm saying here is on a, that's a miniaturized scale. On a magnified scale, let's look at Providence history. There are two halves of history. 1978 to 1999, 21 years, that is the public life. During the 21 years, Sunsi focuses absolutely on Korea, right? So Sunsi focuses for seven years, uh, in, seven years in, uh, in Seoul, and then seven years to spread around, uh, spread around rest of Korea, and then another seven years that's spent on Woimyongdong, kind of thing, like 777, seven, seven, right? So those are the focal points. So those, those 21 years were focal points, teaching the word each and every day, giving the word as much as possible. And that was a time for us to take the words and put it into action. It's our time of training. Now, what Sunsim also says is, is that no one trains for no reason. You train because there's a game. Which means at the end of the 21 years, this is where Satan gets his chance to attack. So God gives the people of God 21 years to train and make themselves. And then Satan comes to attack. And then what happens after 21 years? 1999, grave period. And uh, people who betrayed, uh, there's people who betrayed Sunsim, people who betrayed this history. And there's like all these news articles and stuff that comes against Sunsim, just kind of how it is right now. And a lot of people left province at that time, at that time too, right? Why? You get to 21 years to train and you get, then you have the actual fight. It's like training for soccer. No one trains for soccer just to train. Everyone trains because there's a game you actually have to play to show that your training was actually worth it, right? In the same way too, 
Uh, second half of history is 2002 to 2023, and this was focused on world ministry. So the world ministry is focused on from 2002. It goes all over the world. Taiwan grows, Japan grows, America, Malaysia, all these countries are growing. And after 21 years, the year 2023, what happens? Another huge tribulation, difficulties and hardships, right? And because it's kind of the time where Satan gets to attack, right? And we have to realize is that uh, Satan always gets a chance to attack after the believers have time to develop and make themselves. And one of the things that um, this reader did bring up, and this is, this is true, is uh, the beast will come out and, you know, blaspheme, and it will filter out the people whose names are not written in the book of the Lamb, which is true. Because even if you look at what's happening now, all the people that did not stay true, that were not actually true, they all left during the time of tribulation. Only those that remain true to the word, true to this history, they are the ones that are actually still here right now. And we have to realize it's like, ah, this, it's true. That's where the filtering comes in. The people that are struggling are the one. The people that struggled and left, the people that um, couldn't wait for the trial to end or see the actual evidence itself, they left even before all these times here. Some people were already struggling for so long, they're just looking for a reason to leave too, right? So we see that the filtering also happens just as the Bible says, that those whose names were not written in the book, yeah, they, they were taken away by the tribulations, right? And I looked at that and I said, oh, that, that makes so much sense. And that's something that we really, really have to understand. And I'm grateful and thankful that, they, um, that this reader brought up all these verses too. Right, And as looking at these verses, we're able to say, oh, this is what's going on here. This is what's happening here at this time. Right, So uh, that is the question for today. hope it's something that you guys have thoroughly and genuinely enjoyed. Uh, if you guys have any of the questions that come up, please let me know. Remember, there is no holidays for the Morning Star Drive. So wherever I am, whatever country I'm in, this will always be happening. Just not sure what part of the world I'm going to be in. At the moment right now, I'm in Jinsan right next to Woi Dong. So uh, I am doing all my podcasts from here at the moment. Okay. So either way, uh, this is something that uh, I hope that you guys really enjoyed that Q&A. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any other thing, any questions, go ahead and send, me, send them to me too. All right. So before we get into the final music break, uh, no, not the music break, until we get into the final segment, uh, let's get into the last music break of the day. 2023. We've all come a long way. Many different stories, but we're all on the same journey. Many, many ups and downs, but we're all still around. Many, many, many lessons, but each one came with a blessing. Let's not forget for where we come from when we make this confession. Some people just want to watch the world burn. As for you and I, let's set ourselves on fire. Shine a light so bright that will make the people say, Burning life, burning life, uh-huh. Look at the flames in my eyes, watch it burn, but don't stare too long, you might lose your sight. Some people gunning for a death, but they'll never see our demise, burning life, burning life. Who's the one? I'm the one, he's the one, are you the one? No, we're the ones, we're the ones who keep the fire going till the day we die, till they see the light, make it bright, till we hear the people say, born sinner, never could be ill, I know I'm back from the dead, yeah, the Lord is my healer, I took the red pill, that's why I call him teacher, when you learn about the spirit, oh, there ain't nothing real. The one you learn from determines your entire destiny Learn from the one who taught about eternity Cloud craving, paper chasing The joy is only temporary I don't wanna do the same thing So I hide to count the vanity I keep my eyes on the prize I'll never sell my soul to the devil in disguise With both hands on each side I'm holding on to dear life I keep my guard up, never back down When it goes down, I call on the Christ Spiritual battle, answer the call It's Call of Duty, Modern Warfare Put the armor of God, the fighting Lucy with the rock I got atomic bombs, love the Lord your God And know your brothers want the demons fall Don't be deceived, know who the ups is Keep the unity and peace, go far way across this Came to preach the word of God like I'm born in Tarsus Here to testify the things I've seen on road to Damascus He's the real deal, the real thing Be glad you heard the king's speech Blessed to those who reach the end and get to hear the Lord speak G.O.D.'s, P.O.C., we fulfilled every Everything, burning life, kerosene, burning life, legacy. You will never see me stop in the future. 
The life that fulfills God's will will continue. Everyone thinks I'm unfortunate because I go through suffering. But inside of me it's different. Because I walk the path of eternal life. Burning life, burning life, uh-huh. Look at the flames in my eyes, watch it burn, but don't stay too long, you might lose your sight. Some people gunning for a death, but they'll never see our demise. Burning life, burning life. Who's the one? I'm the one, he's the one. Are you the one? No, we're the ones. We're the ones who keep the fire going till the day we die, till they see the light, make it bright, till we hear the people say, Like Mary poured out her perfume on Jesus' feet, I must have Okay, so let's get into today's uh, final segment. And of course, we do sermons in the sky. Uh, but uh, lately, uh, I've been kind of changing this up just a little bit because of the time that we're living in and uh, because of the conditions that are being set at this time. And we are doing a bunch of these uh, 21 day prayer conditions. And we are doing one right now. And it's going to end about three days before Sun Seems' final verdict is out. And uh, as Sun Seems said in uh, this week's Wednesday message, it's we need to pray. It's only when we pray, uh, this is where God will answer or God will give uh, you know, judgment to those that are evil. So I really want to make sure that we can pray for uh, the situation that's coming up on October 2nd. And I hope that all of us uh, will be able to uh, do this prayer together uh, in our hearts. Almighty God, Holy Spirit, Holy Son, Lord Jesus, we are so grateful and thankful to be living in this time. This very time that people 2,000 years ago had been waiting for diligently patiently even while being in the spiritual world and even though they have so much righteousness like peter evangelizing three thousand in a day paul circumventing the entire world three times over they were not able to meet this very time that we're living in right now God, we should be jumping for joy in excitement, understanding how lucky and how great and how we won the lottery to be here in this moment. I truly pray, God, that our thanksgiving and our love will be pouring out to you each and every day as we pray, knowing that it is you that has saved us, knowing that it is you who has brought us here to this time. God, please forgive us because many times we, we are not as grateful as we should be. We are not doing the things in the way that you want us to. And God, sometimes it just takes, takes time for us to realize how sorry or how lucky we truly are. I pray, God, that you will forgive us, that you will absolve us of our sins, the things that we're ashamed of, the things that we just, we can't even come, come forward in front of you, God, because it's just too, it's too shameful for us to talk about. But I pray, God, that we bring all these things before you right now. Whether it's the fear, the lies, whether it's not doing righteousness, whether it's the acts of evil, whether it's not having that conviction in this history or being thankful enough, we put them all at your feet and we ask for your forgiveness. And we know that in the goodness of your love and your mercy, that we, when we come with true repentant hearts, you will forgive us and you will take these sins away like they were never there. I pray, God, we come before you now as clean people of this history. 
and we ask you at this time for one of these one of the greatest prayers that we've been asking for a great prayer that does not get answered in a day or two it's a prayer for our beloved son's name in this time right now as we see satan at work at at the peak of his power as we see satan lord just as moses looked at pharaoh and when you came to him you said go back to egypt and tell pharaoh to let my people go moses was scared and he thought he couldn't do it and he thought that there's no way this was going to happen but god said you told them you will be with him so don't worry and we come in the same name of that same god who saved moses who saved elijah who saved ezekiel who saved daniel who saved all of us now through our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your love. And the reason we need mercy, because we call mercy for son's name. How much he wants to just Preach the gospel. Take care of every life. Make sure that this history is safe for the next thousand years. And we call mercy on his behalf that he does not have to suffer, but we will be those that will stand up on his behalf. We ask you, God, as the three judges are waiting and they're looking at all the information in this trial, and they're looking at Sunstein, they're looking at what the public says, they're looking at the evidence. We pray, God, that you will open their eyes and their hearts not to see anything else but what is truth and what is real. This is a time where they can no longer be people like Pontius Pilate who left it up to the crowds to determine Jesus's fate. This is a time for justice. And we pray for justice to happen. And as we have these two weeks left, that you will truly open our hearts completely and help us, God, to really be able to find what is best and what is right and what is true. That you will make their hearts true to the law even if it's the laws of this world, they were made with goodness in mind. And they were made, God, so that people, even though we're flawed, that if we put the laws to the test and we did exactly as the laws say, we know that Sunsi would be set free. But we also know that Satan is working and his mind is just as ferocious and his mind is just as, just as much playing with the hearts of, of, of human kinds of people who are not centered on you, but centered on people or themselves. We pray, God, that you will cast Satan out in Jesus' name. We pray so much, God, that your power may be seen. And God, if, it is be if it's because of us, why all these things are happening, we truly pray right now, God, that you will take away that sin, that you will forgive us for the inaction. You'll forgive us for not, for not having conviction. You'll forgive us for not doing it the right way. We pray, God, that it is with you, that only you will be the one. Lead us to the next place. Help us, God, to understand. Help us, God, to know none of these things are going to work without you. Everything that happens from this point on, God, they cannot be helped with human strength and human power. It can only be helped by you. It can only be helped by your omnipotence, the greatness and almightiness that you only you hold. 
And we pray, God, that our hearts and our prayers and our petitions will reach its full limit so that you may work and get into full action. Please, God, bless these weeks of prayer. Help us to topple this tower of Babel that's happening with only human hearts and minds. And let us show the victory of this history. We love you. We truly, truly miss Son's name. And we pray, God, that we will do our prayers to the highest of our abilities. We thank you so much for all that you've done. Guide us in all that we do. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that time of prayer. And that uh, even though I'm the one praying, that uh, we were all praying together. If uh, any of you else out there would like to do one of these prayers, go ahead. I would love to, you know, uh, love for other people to be praying at this time. You know, maybe we could even do one of these things even every single day, right? So that it'd be part of the condition of, of the Morning Star Drive. But if you would like to join in the prayers, uh, please record one and uh, let me know. And uh, I pray that uh, all of us will really be able to uh, make this history run fiery as it should. Okay? So there it is, guys. That is the end of today's Thursday podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Have an amazing and awesome Thursday. We'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It's the morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone, you know. I'm on the morning star drive, you know. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like you know, I'm on the morning star driving